prayer of illumination, let us pray. There is so much information around us to cloud our minds, so many worries to distract us. When we enter in the study of God's word, we desire to do so with clear minds and hearts. Holy Spirit, open us to the truth of the scriptures. Take off anything that would keep us from hearing what we desperately need to hear. Remove our pride that we may be willing to in turn, to turn from our sin and obey. Thank you for the gift of your word and the power that it has to transform us. Amen. The scripture reading is from 1 John 1, 4, 1 through 4, and it's about the word of life. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Christ Jesus, and writing these things that our joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. The reading of the first four verses of the letter to John, of John, should remind us of the first several verses to the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being in him was life, and the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. We get a little hint in that phrase, and we have seen his glory, that the Gospel of John emphasizes Jesus' divinity, Jesus being fully God, whereas 1 John, the letter, emphasizes Jesus' humanity. And part of the reason why this letter is emphasizing Jesus' humanity is because there are starting to be rumors and rumblings within the Christian community that Jesus was only divine instead of both divine and human. I invite you this morning to step into this passage. Obviously, the first followers of Jesus are the ones who had known firsthand the presence of the word of life. That presence lived with them. We are a step removed, but the word of life lives among us, too. So I encourage you to welcome the word of life into your life this morning, every morning, and draw your heart into a place of thankfulness for God's love. In the beginning, the prologue of the gospel refers to the cosmic beginning, which was created through Jesus. Jesus didn't just appear on the scene with the incarnation. He has always been. In this letter of John, the writer declares, we declare what was from the beginning. Now, this beginning isn't referring to the cosmic beginning, but to the beginning of the Christian community. What we have declared from the beginning. First John speaks about or proclaims or preaches what has been heard, what they heard, what they saw, what they looked upon, what they touched with their own hands. The writer was an eyewitness to Jesus' humanity. Perhaps part of what he's referring to when he says we proclaim what we have heard heard was hearing John the Baptist proclaim, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. 
Or maybe part of what he's referring to is hearing Jesus' many I am statements. I am the word of life. I am the light. I am the bread of life. Perhaps what he was referring to when he says we proclaim what we have seen was the Spirit of God descending upon Jesus like a dove. Or maybe seeing one of the many miraculous signs, the healings, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, Jesus speaking to a Samaritan woman at the well, or Jesus intervening when the church leaders were ready to stone the woman caught in adultery. They had seen those things. Perhaps what the writer is referring to when he says, we proclaim what we have looked upon, was watching Jesus hanging on the cross and dying on that cross. Perhaps what he was referring to when he says we proclaim what we have touched was Thomas seeing the risen Christ and being invited by Jesus, touch my hands, touch my side. The Gospel of John 1.14 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. First John speaks to Jesus' incarnation, his humanity. These eyewitnesses have seen and touched and listened to and been taught by this Jesus, who is the word of life. There is no doubt that it is pretty convincing to have people who have a physical connection to the ultimate source of their faith tell their story especially when evidence can be built up as to the truth of that which they share based on real experiences. This introduction to the letter of John makes the case for inviting people into a real story of connection with the teacher, Jesus, to the word of God made flesh. We may be removed, but we have a story to tell. We have something to share with others. Have you seen Jesus? What difference has Jesus made in your life? Why was this word of life shared with others in the early Christian church? The writer of John says the reason is so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with God and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The word translated as fellowship is the Greek word koinonia. This fellowship, this koinonia, is one of the main emphases in this letter. First John is asking, what does a community look like? that is intentionally disciples of Jesus Christ. In part, it means that our fellowship is to bring about the unity Jesus prayed for. It's not individualistic. It's not about just getting together and having a good time, though that's certainly part of it. It's a true and authentic sharing in one another's lives. Fellowship may be understood as communion, participation, or partnership. It is the goal of the proclamation of the gospel. And this fellowship is vertical and horizontal. Jesus and God's relationship is so close and intimate that they refer to each other as father and son. This is our relationship as believers to God, our Father, Jesus, our brother. Our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, and our fellowship is with one another. The writer of this letter says, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. And the only way their joy could be complete 
is if this community lived true koinonia, true fellowship. You see, when this letter was written, the congregation was splitting apart. People were leaving. And the writer says, true joy is not experienced when fellowship is shattered. True joy needs the kind of relationship that the gospel calls us into relationship of loving God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and loving others, loving our neighbor. And you know what? We don't get to pick who our neighbors are. Love one another. Well, in this community, false prophets were helping to split the community apart by proclaiming that Jesus was only divine. People were getting confused. Friends, the world has false prophets today, just as in the time of this letter. False prophets will attempt to deceive God's faithful. Jesus said in Mark 13, 22, false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be alert, Jesus says. I have already told you everything. False prophets today look like powerful political figures who take a scripture passage out of context and try to justify wrong and oppressive actions with it. For us, the word of God includes the written word. Filled with God's spirit, knowing the example that Jesus gave, we have what we need to stay alert and to rightly interpret God's word. Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not stop them. Jesus spoke with and cared for and loved all people, including foreigners. Jesus broke the law when it went against God's law of loving God and loving others. And as much time, as much as we may want to at times, as I said earlier, we don't get to pick who our neighbors and others are. The Roman passage that Sessions used to justify breaking God's law has been used for the same reasons in the past. Used to justify slavery. If we are to be a community of disciples of Christ, we must do what we can do to help and love the least of these. There are actions we can do to help others. What is God calling you to do. The joy of the writer of this letter is connected to the fellowship of the community, a community that includes all people and follows the word of life. Jesus, who was and is and will be the word of life. Welcome the word of life into your life this morning and every day, and draw your heart into a place of thankfulness for God's love, a heart that will be moved to action for the word of life, the word of life who loves you more than you can imagine. The word was, the word is, and the word will be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.